Gophers fans, let's get after it today. Will Coy Parrish stay with the Gophers? We're diving into it today. Then we got to talk a little bit about this quarterback situation. Cole Kramer getting paid some schmula to get played in the bowl game. And Logan Fife, Logan Fife, who is it? He's in the transfer portal. He has a gopher offer. What could it mean? Hey, you are no locked happens, on Golden Gophers. No matter what we're going to do here. We're just going to keep rowing. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota uh, Golden out, Gophers. However it turns out, we're just going to keep rowing. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. We're just going to keep rowing, keep rowing, and keep rowing. You're listening to Locked On Golden Gophers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Kane Rob, host of the podcast, former collegiate football video coordinator and recruiting assistant here to talk Golden Gophers with you each and every day of the week, Monday through Friday. And shout out to all the everydayers out there that are tapping in each and every day. We've got Gophers content for you on the daily, unless your boy is down with a bad illness, a sickness, a science infection, then every once in a while, we got to take some time to recover. But I appreciate y'all tuning in, being loyal listeners, and I appreciate the sentiments for uh, getting well soon. I really do. Uh, I'm, I apologize for sounding sick on some of the podcasts, but we will be getting better, just like hopefully the Gophers will be getting better. Now, we talked a lot of sports yesterday. We talked basketball. We talked women's basketball, men's basketball, football, and so much more. But today we're focusing on the football team. We're focusing on Koi Parrish, 2024 commit, one of the best commits in the Gophers class. He might be the number one commit in the class, in my opinion, depending on which ranking service you're looking at. It's a different opinion, but what I have to say <clears throat> is Koi Parrish is a dog, and he might be, I think he is the most talented recruit in this commit class of 2024, and he announced that he is going to be signing his national letter of intent for a school at Esco Theater on signing day, December 20th at 2.30 p.m. CST. But he didn't say who he was signing that for. So we don't know what's happening. Will it be Minnesota? Will he stay there at this moment in time? He is verbally committed to Minnesota still at this very moment. And that is a positive thing. But none of that matters until Penn touches paper on December 20th for the National Signing Day, officially signing an NLI. Not an NIL, not uh, being able to be paid for being an athlete in the collegiate space for name, image, and like this. No, a national letter of intent. And that is what we are hoping that Koi Parrish puts pen to paper and joins the maroon and gold on December 20th. But many fans have already written him off. They've already said he's not coming. He's not staying home. He's not being here. He's going to go to a bigger school. We always lose out because Minnesota always loses. And they expect Minnesota to lose always, no matter what it is, whatever context we are talking about, Minnesota loses. That's what some fans have the mindset of. Others are for, focused on supporting and showing love to Koi Parrish on every single one of his posts. And you know what? Credit to you. Keep showing the love. Keep it positive. Keep it going. I like that choice. I like that decision from our Gophers fans. Tagging him in Nubin accolades. Like, you could be the next one. You will be the next one. You will be a legend. Those things, man. Keep showing love as Gopher fans on his post because regardless, it always feels good to hear those things. Even if he doesn't end up here, he will appreciate the hometown love. And maybe if it doesn't work out elsewhere, if he is to choose elsewhere, maybe he comes back via the transfer portal. Anything can happen, but keeping the love going is definitely a positive for Gophers fans in any scenario when it comes to the transfer portal and adding players when it comes to commitments and trying to get them here keep the positive love going it is so much better than ragging on players we have or things like that that doesn't help when it comes to other players wanting to play for Minnesota now like I said None of it matters until we find out who he signs that and I or NL national letter of intent let's just go with that but what matters most to Koi, I think, besides the glitz and the glamour and all this other stuff, I don't think he's focused on that type of stuff. I think Koi is going to do what he believes is best for him in his football future and well beyond that as well. 
If there are any certainties that I have learned about Koi Parrish in his recruitment, it is the following. It's two things. One, this kid is an absolute freak and honestly will probably be successful at any school in the country for any program. That's how freakishly athletic and talented this guy is. He went 10-1 and one last year as a senior, 27 total touchdowns. He played in 10 games. He had 61 carries for 708 yards and 16 touchdowns. As a running back, he had six receptions, 80 yards, and a touchdown as a receiving option. He had a passing touchdown this season. He had 57 tackles, two sacks, five interceptions, one forced fumble, two fumble recoveries, five defensive touchdowns on the defensive side, which is where the Gophers are hoping he will play at the safety position. And he played as a returner, had 12 returns, 464 yards, and four touchdowns. He does it all. So you can see why Gophers fans are like, man, please stay home, keep it here, and be a legend for the Gophers. <clears throat> you see, Koi is very much aware of what he is looking at. That is point number two of what I have learned about Koi and his recruitment, is he's very much aware of what he is looking for. And to me, I don't think the flash and the glitz and the glam and the huge NIL offers or things like that, I don't think that's what he is focused on in his recruitment. And it has not come off that way whatsoever. He doesn't care about being on podcasts. He doesn't care about being in interviews. He doesn't care about all of the lights and the camera and the action. No, he cares more about usage, development, opportunity, how is your team going to use me? How do I fit to your system? How do I work on your program? That is where his focus is, and that is the absolute right way to do this thing. Now, that doesn't mean Minnesota leads in any way. That doesn't mean the FSUs, the Ohio States, won't be able to win. Not at all, but whoever he chooses, it will be for the correct reason, and that is everything you can ask. When it comes to this situation, that is the most important, in my opinion, because many student athletes don't do that. They don't give that consideration. They don't think about how do I work in this system, this offense, this defense, what have you. And it's very prevalent that many don't. And that is why transfers are up like crazy. That is why some athletes that should probably be playing at a D2 on a full scholarship are playing or are sitting on the bench as a preferred walk-on at a power five because they cared so much to be at a power five. I got a preferred walk-on at this one power five school, so that's where I want to go. Rather than getting your education paid for, rather than standing out at a D2 or an FCS school and then transferring to another opportunity once you have production, no. It matters about where I am going from the jump, and I want to go to a power five school so I can say I'm a part of that team, and then I'll find a way to get on the field somehow, some way. And you don't look at, do I fit in that system? If I'm going to my one power preferred walk-on or my one power five offer or what have you, am I actually a good fit? Do I fit that mold? Do I fit the style? How do they play? If I'm a running back and they're a passing offense, is that where I should be going? Kids don't think about that. They think about oh, you know what? I, I need to post all of my offers. I need to put all of my big schools that I get offers from, put them on Twitter. I'm going to put my top six list graphic. And you know what? I'm only actually talking to like two of those coaches still, but those other schools offered me at one point and they might've pulled their offer, but I can still put their logo on my graphic so everyone can see who offered me and how good I am. Look, that's not going to matter in the long run. What matters is, is being in the right system, even if it's one program, even if it's an FCS school, even if it's a G5 school, and you're in that right system, you can find a way to get on the field, which finds a way to contribute, which finds a way to get you production, which finds a way to be your best self on the field, and the rest will handle itself. Look at Ashton GNT over in Boise State. Dude has absolutely balled out in the right system and the right fit, and he's ended up finding a home, finding a family. And he could have went anywhere he wanted if he hit the transfer portal. But he he stayed loyal and he hung on to it and he stayed there. Look at Tyler Newbin. Tyler Newbin could have went other places and he came here to Minnesota and it fit right. And he had the connections with the others prior to him. And then he had that special moment of with Coney Durr and Tweez and Jordan Howden and all these guys that set the precedent and he wanted to be the next. He wanted to be that someone for the future Gophers and he made it happen. 
and he set the career interception record. That's how you get into those type of, posi uh, type of positions is by getting to a system that fits you. And so that is why no matter what it comes down to, no matter what is said and done, those who pick the program and do it to the scheme fit and the development, they tend to grow where they are and they do what they need and they let the success come along the way. Now, with all that said, Minnesota selling point for Koi Parrish needs to be Antoine Winfield, Jordan Howden, Tyler Newbin. You've seen it all over social media. I'm sure you've seen other coaches post about those things. You are the next one up, Koi Parrish. You can come out here and still make your goals to the NFL absolutely come true. That's obviously a selling point. If Minnesota is smart, another selling point would be having all of those players talk to Koi Parrish about what stood out here at Minnesota and the program and how they were developed and whatnot, especially Tweez, Antoine Winfield, because since he wasn't connected to Joe Rossi at all, that's helpful. In fact, all three have had success prior to Joe Rossi being the defensive coordinator here, so his success isn't what made them. Now, on top of that, they also would be hopefully selling the fact of immediate playing time and no red shirt. That would be a big factor. I think it was a big factor for Darius Taylor, and he came in, he earned the job, and he started. He ended up getting playing time. Now, it wasn't in game one, but he got there before the injury. And then on top of that, he is the type of athlete that could do something like that. And then finally, what will be the most interesting that no one in the media, no one in the program or the fan base, heck, probably no one outside of his home in Esco probably knows for certain is how important is it to him to want his family and friends to be able to attend any and every home game. That is a factor for some folks, and it's not a factor for some folks, and no one will know, but that could be the factor that makes or breaks this decision, and one that I don't think any media member out there will be able to tell you for certain. Now, regardless, I wish Coy nothing but success in his journey, and yes, I truly hope that it is here with Minnesota, but I am certain he is making a decision for all the right reasons. Now, next, I want to talk about Cole Kramer, because that man is making some money to play in this bowl game. Now, I don't know... And I don't think he will be back in 2024. But what have we learned about uh, Cole Kramer? We're diving into that one coming next. First, I got to talk to you about our friends over at Prize Picks because if you like daily fantasy sports made easy, well, Prize Picks is the place to be, my friend. Now, testing all of your skills over on Prize Picks is as easy as one, two, three. And with the football season starting to wrap up, you're going to want to get involved now. Don't worry, it's not going anywhere. You can still do hockey baseball when it comes back, basketball, and so much more. There are so many ways to have fun with daily fantasy sports over at Prize Picks. But if you want to get on the football action, you got to get in right now. So you should head on over and go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college. All you got to do is press more or less on stat projections. And if you get multiples of those correct, you can win up to 25 times your money. So you put in $10, you can get $250 if you hit the right stuff. So make it happen over at prizepicks.com slash locked on college. Use promo code locked on college for a first time deposit match of up to $100. You put in a hundred, you get a hundred. That's $200 right in your account, ready for you to take over when it comes to your stat projections. And again, simple as more or less over at prizepicks.com slash locked on college. <laughs> All right, Gophers fans, let's talk about Cole Kramer because he is playing in the bowl game. He is starting for the Gophers in the bowl game as the quarterback. And from what it sounds like, he was ready to be out, to be gone, to move on beyond football, not just beyond the Gophers, beyond football and go start his life with his soon to be new wife and head out to Arizona to get started on adulting. But after some key departures of Ethan Kalik managed to the transfer portal, Drew Viota to the transfer portal, all of a sudden he was the last man standing when it came to a scholarship holding quarterback on this current Gophers roster, and we got into a bowl game. Now, we didn't qualify with the 6-6 six and six wins, but they still found their way into the final bowl slot, and the Gophers need someone to start at quarterback. It came down to Cole Kramer and walk-on true freshman Max Shikajansky. Now, you know what? After those departures, it seems like the program, Dinkytown Athletes, they got a little bit worried and they offered some good money for Cole Kramer to stay for a month. You stay for a month, you get this money, you're in, you're out, in there like swimwear, and then it's gone. 
Now, he, all he has to do is play one more game, a few more practices, play one more game, and then you got this money. I mean, that's hard to pass up on for anybody. If your job told you, hey, you know what? I know you were thinking about leaving, going to start and be your own entrepreneur, and you can do this and that, and you don't have to worry about uh, the different things that come with the everyday corporate grind. But if you stay on for this one project at the end of the month, I'll pay you half your salary. Half your year's salary, I'll pay it to you right there on the spot. You're going to take that opportunity, plain and simple. And that is what Cole Kramer has essentially been offered is, hey, finish out the month, play this one game, and we'll hit you with that money. Look, that money could be money well spent in order to hopefully save face for the Gophers when it comes to playing Bowling Green in what is a lower tiered bowl game. And in that lower tiered bowl game, if you're not able to retain Cole Kramer and you lose all three of your top quarterbacks, all of your scholarship quarterbacks gone before this bowl game, I don't care who you're playing. It is going to be absolutely difficult to come up with a victory. And even in a lower tiered bowl game, that only hurts your narrative. It only destroys your morale. You have to find a way to be able to compete in that game. And that is what the Gophers did by offering some money for Cole Kramer to be able to start in this game. Because if you get blown out by a G5 school in a lower tier bowl game, regardless, people aren't going to look at the circumstances and be like, oh, well, they missed their top three quarterbacks. No, they're going to look at that box score. They're going to see the whatever the final total says. And if it's a blowout, they're going to be like, man, that program is embarrassing. So this was a way of addressing and overcoming that narrative potentially and overcoming being in a lower bowl and potentially getting blown out. Now this gives you a fighting chance. It gives you the opportunity to go out there and win it. Because if a Minnesota would have had to have a walk on freshman, walk into that bowl game and start against a defense that is known for its turnovers, known for its pass rush and known for its passing defense. And you want a true freshman walk on to go in there and play that game. Let me tell you right now, that would not have finished pretty. I don't care how good someone is. <clears throat> That is setting someone up for success. That would have been unproductive, embarrassing, deflating, tragic, any other descriptors you want to throw in there. That's what it would have been. Now, with Cole Kramer in the lineup, you have someone who has showed to be good enough to hold his own, who has shown he can be a game manager, someone who balled out in the spring game. He has shown moments throwing for two touchdowns, running for two touchdowns in 2021, and he can move. He can get on the mobile bit a little bit. He can be a game manager for the win, and that is everything for the Gophers in this bowl matchup. It also gives Cole Kramer... I believe his first start in his court career with the Golden Gophers and in the maroon and gold and also the chance to go out with a bang, go win a bowl game, keep yourself 5-0 and in your bowls. When it comes to the time that you spent with the program, go out on a start and go out with a win. That could be huge. That could be a great chance to remember your time in college football. That plus having extra tens of thousands of dollars to be able to offset some wedding price or wedding costs coming up and having some spare cash, I would say that this is not a bad deal in one bit for either party. So you know what? We're going to see Cole Kramer and hopefully he has a very successful game in Detroit against Bowling Green. We'll see if we can turn it into the fairy tale ending for the Eden Prairie quarterback though. And we'll see if he is able to ride off into that sunset that's what we're going to be looking for at that bowl game. And what I want to wrap up today's show with is another quarterback, another quarterback to talk about that could potentially be a gopher. Logan Fife in the transfer portal has an offer, but will he make the climb? Will he make the commitment and join the gophers as a second transfer portal quarterback? We're going to dive into that coming up next. First, Gopher fans, we got to talk about our friends over at FanDuel because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any $5 winning money line bet. So you can go on, you can bet on that Thursday night football game, you can bet on some of the Saturday night, Saturday night football games. All you got to do is pick one winner. So if you think Minnesota is going to beat Cincinnati this week, place that $5 money line bet, watch them take the dub and watch your bank account get dropped with $150 in bonus bets. That sounds like a win-win to me and you can do so much more over at FanDuel by going to FanDuel.com slash locked on you can bet on spreads player props over-unders and so much more 
I'd take that money line bet on Minnesota against the Bengals. I think that, you know, Nate uh, Mullins is going to make it happen. JJ is going to be back. And this time, I think he'll stay healthy through it all. And that will lead to a Minnesota win, which could put $150 in your bonus bets with any $5 mini winning money line bet over at fanduel.com slash locked on. Check it out today. All right, I want to talk about Logan Fife one time here at Lockdown Golden Gophers. He is a player who has spent some time at Fresno State with the Bulldogs, and he has started some opportunities in place of injured quarterbacks. This year was Keen. The year before, it was Jake Hayner. Now, in 2022, he started four games for the future Saints draft pick, Jake Hayner, who was injured. Now, in those two years, he saw productivity. Now, why are we talking about Logan? We're talking about him because the Gophers made an offer to him in the transfer portal. That would be the second quarterback that they add to this team if he was to commit. So how did he do in those stints as a starter in subbing in for those injured seasons for quarterbacks? In 2022, he passed for 70% completion on 120 attempts, 892 yards, and two touchdowns. Not too bad. But he also had six interceptions to those two touchdowns. So he had a propensity to turn the ball over, which is not what you like to see when it comes to the quarterback. Now, in 2023, when he had the opportunity to step up, he had a 57% completion. So not so much, not as good as the year prior with the 70. It was on 91 attempts, 642 yards, three touchdowns to two interceptions. Cut down on the turnovers, but not as well in the completion percentage. He also had four rushing touchdowns, so he is suffisable. That is what I'll say. He's not a guy that you want to go and be your starter in a Power 5 program. Not at all. You can't take what he did at Fresno State and see a Power 5 starter, in my opinion. But what you can see is someone that is able to step up and play games in the absence due to injury. And that is what he did. He held his own. He was able to help Fresno State continue to get wins, especially this last year. They were continuing to win. They beat uh, Purdue at one point. You know, I think that he has shown he can be a good step in quarterback in case the worst was to happen. So those numbers aren't going to jump off the page and wow you, but it tells you a few things. One, that Max Brosmer is the starter for next year. And I believe he said in an interview with a recruiting service that he was told Brosmer would get the reps with the ones early and that he could go in and compete for the job. But what that tells me right there is they're already setting the precedence. Look, Brosmer is our starter and you can come in and you can try to push him. If you push him and you outplay him, then nobody's going to say, oh, no, we're going to play the guy that didn't play well. But we are very much intending for Brosmer to be our starter. And that's it. Point blank and period. But also, I think number two. <clears throat> they realize they need someone with experience in case of injury or anything that could go wrong. On top of that, they need someone who could fit the system and handle the pressure, which he has now shown twice. So he can handle that load if it were to happen. Two other things I think it shows with this offer is that Drake Lindsay will have every chance to learn and grow in his first year, probably red shirt. And then with the two veterans in that room to tell him through, talk him through different scenarios, tell him what they've experienced and how he can learn from them and pick their brains and ask any question possible. I think that's on the table, but come 2025, I think he's going to have every single opportunity to compete for the number one job and could maybe even lead in that race with an advantage playing in his favor. And the final thing I think it says is I would expect Minnesota to go extremely aggressive on the QB front in 2025. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they possibly brought in two quarterbacks in that 2025 class if they can do it without ticking off Drake Lindsey or any of the other 2025 commits they would be in conversations with. Now, if they are the right fit and the right talent level, I would not be surprised if Minnesota goes after two or brings in two quarterbacks in that 2025 class and then you have a really young room drake Lindsay, two guys coming in and max Sijansky, who maybe could step up and play in that room as well and you're looking for someone to prove themselves as the future in 2025 and if they don't show it within that time frame then you can also have the option of going to the transfer portal i think that's what this 
tells us in this quarterback room. It's a lot to dive into. It's a lot to think about. But the Gophers have learned regardless that the importance of that quarterback position and having the depth at the position after experience, after experiencing this offseason, I would not be surprised to see them really restock that quarterback room over these next few seasons and make it high priority. That's going to do it for us on today's episode of Locked On Golden Gophers. Tomorrow, we're talking defensive coordinators, and we're diving in on some options we could have there, some wishful thinking we could have there maybe, and so much more. I will see you then. Row the boat, Sky Imago Gophers. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.